Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about Entity Framework. So if you're looking for a real in-depth look into what Entity Framework Core is and how it's different from uh, Entity Framework 6 and earlier versions, this is not really a video that's going to talk about those differences. This is going to be just a general overview of what Entity Framework is and why we need it in our applications. However, at the end of the video, there is one piece of information that everybody does need to know about, both experienced and beginners to ASP.NET. Uh, so we'll talk about that at the end of the video, and you may you know, just want to skip ahead to that if you already know what Entity Framework is. But for the rest of you, I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about Entity Framework, but don't really know what it is or why it's important to your applications. So I just kind of want to give you a quick overview of what it does for you. So a brief statement of what Entity Framework does is that it just basically turns data sources into collections of objects. So it turns your data sources, things like a database, and turns all of that data into various collections of objects, of .NET objects that you can then work with in your code. So take, for example, a, a table called contacts. So let's say we have a database, and our database has a table called contacts. And in this contacts table, it has four columns an ID column, a first name, a last name, and a phone number, which is very similar to the contact object that we've been working with so far in our project. So we've got these four different columns in our contacts table that all contain a variety of different types of data, like ID might be uh, some sort of uh, integer, and first name, last name, and phone number would all be some sort of NVAR car in SQL Server. Well, in our application, we have a contact object with different types of data types, right? ID is an integer, first name, last name, and phone number are strings. And so you might start to think, well, hmm, isn't there some way that we could convert this table of contacts into some sort of collection of type contact? And that's exactly what Entity Framework does. So we have this public what they call a, a data type called db set and it takes a type parameter of some sort of object and in this case we can pass in a data type of contact and then the name of this db set object is contacts and you'll notice that the name of the table matches the name of our db set object so we have a table called contacts and we can create a public DB set of type contact and call it contacts. Then inside of our DB set of contacts, we can actually have a collection of objects of contact. The first contact object would have the similar properties that we found from our contacts table. So the first record in our contacts table would be a type of contact and the property, the ID property for this first record would be one. And then the first name property on our contact object would be Steve. And the last name would be Bishop. And the phone number would be 555-555-5555. So you can see that we're essentially just taking a record or a row in a table. And we're creating an object of a particular type, of a .NET type, and storing it in a collection. Then we do that for the other two records. So we have another contact object stored in our contacts uh, DB set. And that second record then is a type of contact. It's first property ID is equal to two. And then the property first name is Joan, last name is Rivers. And the first, uh, the phone number property is 333-321-4321. And then we do the same thing for Mr. Chaz Roberts here, okay? So we have three different objects of type contact with all of their properties set. And each one of these contact objects is then stored inside of a collection of type DB set. And that DB set object is called contacts. And of course, that 
object name contacts refers back to the table name of contacts. So this is how an ED framework can very easily provide you an interface to communicate with, uh, with your tables in a way that is natural to you in the .NET coding world. Now it does this from one very important object and that is called the DB context. And the DB context gives you the connection options, things like the connection string. So you actually specify, you pass in to this DB context uh, a set of options, and one of those options is the connection string to the database. The DB context also actually defines all of those DB set objects that were public that we saw in the last slide. And you pass into the DB set, uh, a, you know, it is a, the DB set does accept a generic type. So we can just pass in to this DB set whatever type of object we want to store in our database. Additionally, the DB context allows us to define the relationships between the tables. And you do this because there is an, uh, a method on a DB context called on model creating. And you can override that on model creating method. And you can even use, there's a, a special fluent API inside of the on, meth, uh, on model creating method that you can use to define those relationships. And we'll talk about that obviously uh, more in depth as we go into the entity framework. Additionally, the DB context provides us the CRUD functionality so that we can create, read, update, and delete the various objects inside of our database. So it really is a direct link from our .NET code to the database, including the ability to add, remove, update, and delete, uh, or actually I already said that, <laughs> to create, read, update, and delete uh, the records in your database. And then queries are done via link. So if you don't know what link is, you really need to brush up on it because it is very, very important. You really cannot use Entity Framework without understanding the link syntax. And I prefer the Fluent API uh, version of link. I really, I, I've never really found much reason for the full link syntax. I just like the API. It's just so much easier for me to use. So finally, we get to the important nugget of information at the end of the video that both beginners and advanced users should know. And this is really kind of a big one. This, this hit me like a ton of bricks because in Entity Framework, in all the previous versions, we've had basically this way of going, either a uh, code first method or a database first method. And depending upon which method you went with, you could get a completely different structure of how your Entity Framework looked and how you accessed it. And uh, you, know, you could use these things like TT uh, templates. Well, they have done away, essentially done away with the database first method. It's not really gone, gone. It's just that it does something completely different than it did in the past. So code first method is the same as we've always done. You create your own DB context and you create all of your, your uh, uh, define all your tables and your DB sets manually. But now, if you have a database that already exists, you actually create a DB context via a package manager command line. And it reverse engineers your database to create the DB context. So no longer do you get those nice little schematics where you can go in and kind of uh, map out your tables however you want in the designer. That's gone. Everything is now in a DB context and the database first method now, you use a command line utility in the package manager command line to actually reverse engineer the database to create a DB context. And honestly, I think this is fantastic. I, I know that there were a lot of people who really liked that designer, but honestly, it really became a pain in the butt to kind of manage uh, if you didn't get things right. And if you had your models with special uh, you know, data attributes or things like it, like that on there, 
it would cause all sorts of problems if you had to update your model from your database. So I am thrilled to death that they did this, that they took and reverse engineered your DB context from your databases. So everybody is essentially going to have the same type of DB context that everybody will be working on. And this really simplifies things. So there you go. There's that little nugget of information. And I hope you guys learn something from this video. I know it's just a general overview of Entity Framework, but it's really important to understand the basics first before we deep dive into how it works. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section of this video. Otherwise, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, favorite, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.